Hello, and welcome to The Problem Show, episode 17, Brendan McCauley Show. Brendan McCauley is a painter and performance artist from Providence, Rhode Island, currently living in Western Mass. He has a PhD in communication studies at UMass Amherst, where he teaches film and television production. So Brendan, you think you have problems? Yeah, I've got some problems. Uh, and this one, it started like a year ago as like a surprise of blood on toilet paper. Turned out to be a hemorrhoid uh, which I'm told is something that most adults have, but like never really talk about. And, and that means that even now, some other 35 year old man is doing what a 12 year old religious girl does when first encountering like a Southern blood, which is to assume that they're dying and that it's a punishment for something. Um, I'm told that it's harmless. Uh, but it's also really persistent and determined. Uh, over many seasons now, I've tried all of the indigenous witchcrafts of the gay men, like Metamucil and coconut oil. Um, I have approached a, a cashier with nothing but a jar of coconut oil and a straight face and said, yes, just this. I have entered rooms like a Malibu breeze uh, from the tanning salon in East Hampton by the propane tanks, the one called Tropical Tan. Uh, I have since resorted to Western straight man's medicines. Uh, the first time I asked my doctor, he said, stop shitting wrong. The next time to sit in small pools of warm water, third time a gel that I'm afraid to use because its main ingredient is nitroglycerin, which is what TNT is. I tried to make a joke to him about having a dynamite ass or like, what does my back door have in common with the scientific miracle that forged the paths of mighty railroads across this great nation, resulting in the deaths of countless Chinese. Hydrocortisone also did not work. Um, he sends me away with these things because he doesn't want to look at it. So my real problem is really that I don't know how to get my doctor to want to play around with my asshole. I thought maybe I could trick him into it and say that I fell on something, but my doctor is a smart man. He knows that homosexuals play tricks. Uh, the last time that I asked his exasperation that we just had this nice conversation and now this made me want to say, hey, don't be such a pussy. Just do your fucking job and finger me. I brought you to Pizza Hut and now you're being weird. It's small and it's right on the outside. You won't even have to dig around. If you give me a napkin, I can draw you a map. And I did actually draw a map. I'm just gonna share my screen for a quick moment. Can we all see that? Yeah, it's right there. Um, that's the scale. So, but something else is going on. Uh, the way that he blushed at the suggestion that I had admittedly snuck in last minute, having already put on my coat, his hand already on the door. So we were standing eye to eye, something neither of us are ready for or understand. I, I don't know what touching my butthole even once might open up for him because I'm really good looking. And I knew by the sweat on his neck that he was afraid. I mean, I'm basically a top of like, I don't, I don't know what my doctor can get me to do. He's so professional and he has a very calm and soothing voice. What if when he orders me to pull down my pants, I just bite my lip, crease my eyebrows like I've done something wrong. He's hit by the tropical tan, 
throws me across the bed, tearing apart its plastic sheet, so I'm facing the wall, angrily shoves down my little underwear, kicks my feet apart with his feet, keeps them there, and as he applies the surgical scissors, biting my ear, he whispers through his teeth that I can't have Christmas anymore. And then he flies out of the open window, soars over the hills of Amherst, Massachusetts, eyes wide open and full throat shouting a single syllable forever, screaming a vowel across the horizon, leaving me alone for the disinterested nurses to find, the ones who react to everything like they've already seen it and are annoyed to see it again, even though most of what they've ever seen is like, the interior of a Mazda or like the interior of a Hyundai Accord. But I don't think that it will happen because he's shy. Anyway, thanks for listening to my problem. Brendan, thank you. That was fantastic. And thank you all for coming. Remember, this show is open to you. And if you want to come on, please, oh, if you would like to be featured, please just reach out to me. My name is, <laughs> my name is Ish. Uh, the email is crypt, K-R-V-P-T-P-R-O-B-L-E-M-S cryptproblems at gmail.com. Oh, and here's an announcement. Um, on December 30th at 7 p.m., the problem show will be featured on Focus Locus, a Northampton open media program that is put together by Liz, oh, oh. <laughs> that is put together by Liz Wilber. Um, That's a Facebook event and uh, Oh, by the way, happy holidays to everyone. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for coming. I, 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 will, I will love to see you again if you are like to come. You're, uh, if you are, are we, we, we really care about you guys that we want to be closer. So, okay, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Th Ash. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. Thanks. That was amazing.